I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but there have been a lot, and I mean a lot of new releases. So I thought that I would choose my curated list of new books that I wanna try out, put them to the ultimate test in today's video. So if I wasn't clear enough, yes, I will be reading six different new releases that have came out in the past month, and we're gonna be seeing what I think about them. Yeah, guys, that's the video. Come on, just start watching it. Hello. Okay, it's time to start the first book for this video. Also shout out to Biblio Styles for this sweatshirt that I got because this is so true for today's video. That's literally me because my plan for the next like four or five days is to literally just sit and get through all of these books. It's either probably A, a smart decision or B, a dumb decision to start with your most anticipated because I feel like you can either lose momentum or if you could wait for your most anticipated read for the last, maybe it would affect it negatively in a way. Doesn't matter. The most anticipated release of this month, ladies and gentlemen, is obviously, or may not be obvious, but to me and a lot of other people, is Magnolia Parks Into the Dark. I'm gonna give you guys a little breakdown on this. If you guys don't know, this is the last Magnolia Parks book in the Magnolia Parks series. That may be a little bit confusing. I've been seeing some discourse around of people being confused by this. Trust me, I am also a little confused. So it's called the Magnolia Parks series, but there's Magnolia Parks and then there's Daisy Hates. So right now there's Magnolia Parks and then it goes Daisy Hates and then Magnolia Parks the long way home and then it's daisy hates the great undoing and now it's magnolia parks into the dark so this is the last installment of the magnolia parks part of the series there's still going to be daisy hates books and honestly if you guys want to be more educated sarah sarah's probably got the information for you this book is the last book though for magnolia parks where you're going to be in magnolia and bj's point of view so very interested slash scared to go into this because of what happened in the last Magnolia Parks book. Very fearful also what happened in the last Daisy Hates. I mean we're we're in a tension filled spot right now. This book is extremely thick. I literally went and got this the other day from Barnes if you didn't see the TikTok and this book is so thick. This book is literally like 700 pages, but we're gonna start this. Honestly, if you guys are asking me, I do prefer the Daisy Hates books over the Magnolia Parks books just because I prefer certain point of views in that book. Somebody whose name starts with a J. I prefer just being in that world and what's going on over there more than I do like these characters personally. I still really like these characters. I've never rated a Magnolia Parks book five and The Great Undoing. Daisy Hates The Great Undoing is a five star for me. So very interested to see where we go with this book, where this book's gonna take us. It's always very drama filled if you've never read Magnolia Parks before. Expect Gossip Girl, Make It London, Social Elites, so much drama, so much happening all at one time. There's literally always miscommunication going on as well. I would say if you hate the miscommunication trope, don't pick up these books, but I am an avid hater of the miscommunication trope and I really enjoy these books. I feel like you just kind of have to go into it knowing that there's going to be major miscommunications and to just kind of go along for the ride. Now that I've talked so much about the series and I, I promise I probably, actually I won't promise that, but I will try to promise not to speak in so much detail about any of the other books, but this one is a part of the series, so I thought I would give some background information because I do seek some like confusion when it comes to when I talk about these books. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Also, obviously this vlog is going to be non-spoiler, so that's what's, that's what's going on. But let's see. Okay, I will say I am in love with Jessa Hastings writing. I feel like I've said this before, I have such a profound appreciation for her writing and it's just so personal and it feels alive almost. Like she has beautiful quotes, but her writing feels like it's like living and breathing personally. Everything is subjective, but I just do really love it. Like even just little things of the writing that are just seemingly meaningless that I just eat up. Like I'm literally only on page two and I just automatically feel refreshed and back into this world. And like, it's been so long, like months since I've read a Magnolia Parks book or just even been in this universe physically within reading the book. It just feels amazing. Like I just, even if you look at it and you think it's not up your alley, I would honestly ask you just to try it. For the writing within itself, I just love it. Thank you. 
Hello, update. Are you ready? It's 6 a.m. the next day. It's not the same night. So last night I did in fact fall asleep whilst reading. I also texted Sarah because we started, we started getting to the point in the book where things were starting to go on that I was like, what? What is this going to start meaning? I got about 15% into the book and I now plan on knocking this out today. Not like knocking out like, uh, I'm so over it, but like, you know what I mean? Reading it. So I'm actually going to bring this with me to the gym. That's where I'm going right now. That's why I look terrible. But you see me at my worst. So do you guys, quite honestly. But I'm going to bring this. Current thoughts so far? None. I actually have no thoughts. I feel like I never have any thoughts. Like this series is so particular that it's not like if you're picking up another book. You know what I mean? Like it's just so different. It's like when I pick up the next Boys of Tommen book, we're not really like going for plot here. Like there's no like plot. None. There's no plot. It's just a character study or it's like picking up the Addicted series. And every time I pick back up a Magnolia Parks book or the Boys of Tommen series, they remind me so much of the Addicted series, not because of the content. Well, actually, Magnolia Parks really reminds me of the Addicted series. Like, if you guys really, really, really liked the Addicted series, I feel like you have a high percentage. Like, I feel like I would probably pull 80% out of nowhere. Maybe if we want to get more technical, I'll say 82.3 to make it sound like I did a little bit more analytics-wise, but really, this is just a guesstimate because it's kind of the same premise. Group of rich people, super tight-knit, a bunch of stuff is always happening to them. They're always in the media. I feel like you would like this series, but it's just like the Addicted series where it's literally just like a character study and things are happening to them and you're just kind of reading about it and you don't agree with really a lot that they do, but you're still reading it and enjoying it. Enjoying my time, gonna bring it to the gym, see how far we can get into it while I'm on the treadmill. Don't think I'm like Superman or something. It's not impressive what I do at the gym, so. <laughs> the urge to just randomly pick up a new skill at 3 a.m. when you can't read so then you reach over on your computer and you're like oh where do I start learning to pick up this new hobby or figure out this new skill well I have just the place for you you guys can head to Skillshare who is the kind sponsor of today's video so thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creative Skillshare offers so many different things it is a world-class community that connects the teachers and their members. They incorporate a learn by doing approach and are a very on-demand platform. They have stackable lessons so you can learn at your own pace, which is very important when trying to pick up something new. And there are so many different hobbies to pick up on Skillshare, whether you are just picking up a new hobby or you're wanting to pick up a new skill. I'm talking drawing, self-care, sewing, even creative writing for all of my aspiring authors out there. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my thumbnails are something that I personally really love to do and it's where a big form of my creativeness comes out in and lately I've been feeling a little stuck with them so I've been wanting to find different ways to transform them and despite what you may believe I am not good at just by myself learning these new techniques so thankfully I have turned to Skillshare to learn just how to navigate to different platforms from like Photoshop, Procreate, all of these different modern day editing softwares that I honestly have no idea about. I've been taking Lindsay Marsh's class on Graphic Design Masterclass which has been helping me to learn design design theory and how to apply that to my thumbnails in a way in which I can make my thumbnails better that encapsulate my creative vibe for my channel in an eye-catching way. And it's really been helping me because I can easily see as I go through the lessons which videos I've already learned from. I mean, I can even go back to them, but it really helps me keep track. That way I can always like be on track to my goal. And don't worry, if you guys are overwhelmed and don't know where to start, that is where learning paths come in. Skillshare's learning paths help you know exactly where you should start. Basically, you choose the categories that you 
were interested in learning in and they curate a selection of videos for you to start from. So this basically helps you take the searching out of it. You can just go straight into the lessons. And like I said earlier, they make it super easy to keep track of your progress. That way you are constantly on the line of helping yourself learn this new goal and you're constantly keeping track of your progress. And they give a variety of different teachers that you can choose from to learn from. That way you can find what helps best fit with you in the way that they are teaching. This is all used to help create the best learning environment for yourself because at the end of the day, that is the most important in helping you actually obtain this new skill. If you guys are interested, don't worry. I have an absolute amazing thing to tell you guys. The first 500 people to click the link down in my description are going to get Skillshare for a month free. I'm telling you guys, the first 500 people to click the link down in my description, you guys are going to get a month free and see how amazing Skillshare is and that really getting involved and really helping you learn a new skill. And thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back into this reading. Hello. Sorry, I'm doing the British accent because these characters are British. Um, my Kindle says that I am 66% through this book right now and I've been going back and forth from like physically reading it to being on the Kindle. It's depending on my laziness level because let's be honest, like if we're gonna be honest for a second, I haven't transported over but like I know I will at some point. I haven't transported over into like sitting and getting the Kindle thing that clips and I just have a remote that pushes to flip the page. Like, I haven't gotten there yet. But most of the time when I bring my Kindle with me, it is for convenience, yes, but it's also because of laziness of not wanting to hold a book, especially if the book is a little bit thicker like this one is. I usually opt for the Kindle. I'm lazy with certain things in life, okay? Anyway, 66% into this book, a whole lot has been happening. I have not had any, like, heavy outwardly emotions yet. I've texted Sarah a lot about what's happening in this book, and as I kind of give these updates, I'm going to actually take these few tabs that I started doing out of the book because then I transferred over to Kindle and it's just annoying for me to see tabs only at the beginning of the book. Yesterday when I was starting the book I was telling you guys how it's kind of like a slice of life and if that isn't for you then like these books would probably be hard to get into because not a whole lot is happening at every moment like you're just really reading about these people and their day-to-day -day lives and like what's going on and obviously they're celebrities so like some things will happen it's not like nothing happens in these books if that makes any sense i literally don't think that it does make any sense but i'm trying here i also keep having deja vu while reading this book and i don't love that feeling and i don't know if it's just because we're talking about things that we've already talked about within the series or if it's because i'm having actual deja vu but i would love i would love to know why anyway now that looks a lot better to me that it just doesn't have anything i'm kind of getting to a point where all of that to say about a character study is that i feel like though sometimes like with these books you have to like really 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 be in love with the characters to like really fully 100% love kind of a character study. Listen, I'm all for a character study. Literally some of my most favorite books that I like put on a pedestal to you guys are character studies. I will say though about 70% in we can round up because you guys know the rounding rule. Did anybody else learn the rounding rule that like if it's above five you can just round up to like the next nearest like 10 whatever this isn't second grade math class i don't need to explain this to you but basically what i'm saying is that i'm bored right now i do feel like i enjoy the daisy hates books more i kind of enjoy more of like what that's following than the magnolia park so i am just at a point where i'm a little bored because i don't feel like i have as much of an emotional stake in the characters as i do like some of the other characters in the book so i feel like i'm just kind of at a point in this where I'm just a little bored and it's like I'm wanting to put down the book. Up until this point I haven't really been feeling that way. I just think things are getting a little it's not even dragged out because honestly in the grand perspective of things I feel like it's absolutely necessary to the longevity of which this storyline is taking place. This book is a long book but I feel like it would be heavily unrealistic even though we read their fiction books we're not reading them to be super realistic but then again in some ways you do want them to stay you know a little true to real life i feel like it would be incredibly unrealistic if we were to read this book and the things that have transpired within so many different relationships and friendships and just in their lives period that it could be resolved within three to four hundred pages i just don't feel that way it because the magnolia park series does feel heavily realistic in a 
elite socialite type of way. Obviously, it's not realistic to my life. To look at it in that lens, I feel like, you know, dealing with, like, media or just, like, things that have transpired in this book, it's, it's valid. It's valid, okay? And uh, with the Magnolia Park series, I do feel that even, like, I feel like especially Sarah gets me saying this the most because she gets my raw reactions to these books is that I get annoyed with them a lot because there's a lot of miscommunication there's just a lot of drama that happens that I feel like is a little annoying to me at points but I always am like valid though valid it's not like oh this is just annoying to be annoying it's annoying in the way that life is annoying you know what I mean like it's like oh this is so annoying that this is happening but this is life and it's happening so it's not really a discount towards the book it's just the different emotions that you feel when reading a book which I can applaud because I always say and I said this in my last month's wrap up that I do enjoy when books can make me feel a range of emotions in which I feel like they are being written for. Obviously it's different to be feeling annoyed when I feel like the purpose of a certain scenario or scene is to be annoyed versus being annoyed because the book is inherently bad. You know what I mean? I am a little bored right now but I've really been enjoying it. I'm about 70% almost into it. I am definitely planning on reading it. I'm reading it a lot slower but I feel like there's a lot of things going on in this book that I've kind of had to like take a step back but I mean even kind of the pacing of it I'm kind of reading it a little slow but I'm interested to see what is going to transpire here and how this book is going to wrap up and end. There's a lot of loose threads. If you know, you know that there's a lot of loose threads right now, so I'm excited to see how those wrap up. This lighting is not good. Let's grab the necessities. What did I bring over here? A whole lot. I literally am never not bringing a bunch of stuff with me. Okay. Chipotle has been consumed as well as this book has been finished by years truly to kind of expand and build upon what I was saying earlier. Even if I was feeling a little bit bored, I really appreciated the kind of more realistic timeline and the span of events in which things were being handled within the book. I would say like 5% of the last part of the book, we kind of start to diverge into like Daisy Hates books territory, but the whole entire series this has kind of happened where it's went like Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates, Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates as the books come out. So at the end of the books, you kind of start diving into the other circumstances that are going on with the other characters that those books follow if that makes any sense. So I feel like we did spend a little bit of time kind of using the main characters from this book to kind of look at those to set up for that book obviously and like what we can kind of go in with grains of sand. Literally just grains of sand. That really got me riled up. I was like oh god I'm just already annoyed going into it because that is a whole entire miscommunication within itself. Okay. Ultimately loved it absolutely adored the way that this book ended off. I loved the growth and development and the importance of showing certain things and how we cannot move along in a healthy way. Nothing is ever going to grow here unless certain things are fixed and you kind of leave off like everything kind of feels just a little complete. Obviously there's still some like open-endedness that you will see through the other books. I think that there's like two other Daisy books. I think that's what Sarah told me. And she's the professional. She has a degree in Magnolia Park, so I will believe whatever she tells me. But yeah, that was that was great. That was a grand old time. This was a 700 page book that I just finished. First book of this video is done. So I have decided to really test my emotional durability and really put myself to the absolute utmost grandest test and game of all is how far can I push myself emotionally and already not in the greatest headspace how far can we go let's be honest this book 
had a lot going on in it, okay? A lot emotionally to go through. And now I'm going to pick up If Only I Had Told Her, which is kind of a continuation slash kind of look into another perspective of If He Had Been With Me. And this is a book that I feel like a lot of people have been anticipating a lot longer than I have. I'm going to start If Only I Told Her. Let's open this up and see how much page one hurts. Oh, I love the author's note. not good at chugging things but I am good at reading things last night actually I finished if only I had told her finished this last night not this morning not the day before but last night <laughs> I don't even I hate using the word disappointed I hate saying I was disappointed because I feel like it brings upon this negative connotation towards writing or just towards the book period and people think like oh this is a bad book because it's disappointing i would say about 80 percent of the time especially if i've read a book that is like a predecessor to this one i let me look up that was like a big word for me and i want to make sure that that's right well it is towards a person but we're going to make this towards a book if it's like the next book in a series like it doesn't mean that this book is bad it just means that there are expectations that i built up because of previous installments or because of the author's previous works that it didn't meet up to these expectations that i had set up in my mind so therefore i'm disappointed because of what i set up in my mind personally it doesn't make it a bad book and i say that because i am going to call this book disappointing after reading it I was under the impression that this book was just like one POV that we really wanted. We got like three different point of views in this book and I would kind of call them unnecessary a little bit. I was under the impression that we were just getting this one point of view and then we get two other point of views that I kind of found pointless especially one of the point of views i was like okay we didn't really care about this character in the other book and then all of a sudden we're getting their point of view and i feel like it just did nothing for the story i guess i personally i don't know if there were other people who would have liked this character's point of view i forgot about this character if i'm being honest it wasn't a huge i feel plot point of the book and then got so many chapters that kind of were just uh, nothing then we get another point of view and that was just like okay 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 like at first I was like excited. I was like, ooh, we're going into this, we're getting this point of view. And then it just ended and it added nothing. Nothing that we didn't already know through the other point of view in the other book. Like literally we didn't like really learn any new information. I mean like sure some of it was cute to understand and kind of get some like background knowledge on. But then I just kind of almost found it a little like, oh, cause like even the way that we're just the character in the first point of view is like describing the other one. I know that this may sound annoying for me to explain, but I'm trying to explain it in a very non-spoiler way. I was like, oh, this is not getting like in love and just kind of whatever. Like they're kind of like saying like these negative things about the other character and, but I, I've always loved them type of way. Like it just honestly fell extremely flat for me. I didn't really love it at all. I feel like this, I could have went my whole entire life without reading this and would have been perfectly fine. I really only liked the idea of having this point of view after this book was announced. So I got very excited for it, built up expectations, and it did not meet any of those at all. So in honor of last night for Melbourne, Melbourne? Melbourne? In honor of last night at Taylor Swift's concert and her singing one of my most wanted surprise songs, This Is Me Trying, I thought that we would pick up the breakup tour because I've heard that this is like super Swifty coded. I don't even know what that means. I don't know if they're trying to model this after Taylor. I really hope not because can we have a conversation very quick? Do I do anything quickly? No, but I'm going to say very quickly anyway. The phenomenon I feel of authors jumping on the Taylor Swift train thinking that it will get them sales. And I mean like I am going to be severely disappointed if this is one of those gimmicks. But I've seen so many authors kind of go onto this train of like Swift 
Swift decoded or like talking about Taylor Swift or making it very much like about Taylor Swift in a non-organic way in a way that's just very very transparent that they are just trying to get that group of people who is a very expansive group of people I feel like book people and Swifties unite you know what I mean so I feel like they really try to get you in that way where it feels like you're not really focused on the plot greatness of your story you just know that if you kind of center it around this one big thing that that will get people to buy it I'm really hoping that this is not the case with that one I'm gonna stop talking and get to reading Hello. I have been charging my camera so you guys did not get any, am I sweating? I was charging my battery so you guys didn't get b-roll of me reading the breakup tour but I just finished it. Granted this book is literally, I don't even think, maybe it is right at 300 pages. 315. Didn't love this book at all all the pacing felt so weird because to me it felt so much longer than it was because there was pretty much nothing happening it was just the same scenes over and over and over again i did not root for the couple at all in this book literally i was like wait am i supposed to root for this because it pretty much puts in writing how extremely different the two people are like at their roots like this is just who they are it is nothing against either one of them they are just not two people that i would ever foresee working in a relationship and their relationship doesn't necessarily even work the base of the issue is commonly reoccurring within the entirety of the book and is never really resolved like there is a central issue within their relationship of why it ended and that they just keep on coming back to and that's not something that you can necessarily fix like sometimes with people you are just two people who just do not work your life is not cut out to be together and that's how this book felt and then all of a sudden at the end it's just like yeah and we're gonna be together excuse me also the main girl in this book she is very you know like career focused loves her career all the power to you but she kind of discounts the guy's feelings because he's not really i'm gonna be honest cut out to be in the starlight and he kind of is uncomfortable by the plays that you have to make in this fame world of like pulling strings and public appearances and she just kind of like throws out every single uncomfortable feeling that this man has and he just kind of has to like deal with it did not didn't root for them literally at all so those are my thoughts on the breakup tour i'm also saving all of the ratings for the end because i'm annoying also because i do like to sit on my thoughts i don't like to just out wordly um rate books because i feel that most of the time i change my mind like 90 percent of the time so that's why really i don't do it to be like get the watch time up you gotta wait till the end of the video i really don't i don't it's just more that that way i can sit with my emotions but so far we have read three of my anticipated new releases i actually think i'm going to try to clean up my room and do some other little things so i think i'm going to put on the audiobook of good material by dolly alterton which is the next let me grab it and show you guys like this is the cover of the book i feel like it is gorgeous i love this little detail of, like the clothesline hanging and the like sleeves of the shirt and even look at like the little blurbs on the back the color blocking i have been liking to listen to literary fiction and memoirs especially and then sometimes some fantasy books on audiobook because i feel like it goes in my brain more but yeah i'm gonna pop on some headphones clean up my room because i'm in a state of depression room right now and i would love to clean that up and also give myself a little bit of a brain break because i've started to notice that you know it's been several hours straight consecutively days of me just staring at words on a paper so i would like to just intake the content another way <laughs> Hello. I have great news. I finished this book last night. Actually, I listened to the whole entire audiobook, not to brag or anything. Actually, I don't feel like standing. So I finished this last night and honestly, I really, I almost feel like if I would have just like read this book, I wouldn't have liked it or it wouldn't have got as a high rating as it has right now in my mind if I would have read the book. I feel like 
it is a book where I would really, really recommend the audiobook. I would say that this is a very raw and real depiction of a breakup and what I feel like anybody goes through. It's very raw and real and it depicts kind of what somebody goes through after a breakup from a relationship that they didn't want to end, kind of what that looks like. Again, I know I've said it, but in a very realistic way because sometimes these books will like really hint at like some of the, you know, things that we don't really want to talk about when you're feeling these deep feelings and how you kind of lose your mind a little bit and start doing things that may even feel like uncharacteristic or may be just plain old stupid. This book really explores like the what that time and what those deep feelings feel and kind of self-exploration and it's just kind of like that a story about a breakup and it was thoroughly entertaining. It, it was just meh to me though at the end of the day. I was listening to the audiobook and I was entertained and I was enthralled in the story but I don't think that I will ever unfortunately think about this book again. So those are my thoughts on this. Okay, I'm going to save one of my most favorites for last. So the next book that I am picking up, we only have two more. So this one and another one for today's video of which books that I'm reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up The Fury. This is the same author as The Silent Patient. And then if you read his other book, which is The Maidens, which I read, I really enjoyed both of those books. And if you were a frequent viewer, I do read thrillers from time to time. I used to really love thrillers, but I have become very highly critical of them because I feel like for me, oh my god, I just like did that so hard. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I did that really hard. But for me, in the thriller space, I feel like there's a lot more things to be critical about. Pacing, plot twistability, like did I guess it, did I not, was it entertaining? Like I feel like there's so much that makes a thriller good. And his thrillers are kind of more on a higher pedestal to me. The thriller space, him, Riley Sager, um, I would probably say Alice Feeney like those are the only ones that I've really truly been able to read and it's like really really got me. Taylor Adams as well. Taylor Adams is a definite one as well. So this is the newest book from him and I honestly don't even know what this is about at all so I'm just gonna go into it that way. You know the deal if you're around here a lot as soon as I take off the dust jacket it is time to shine. The Fury. Let's read the first page together, shall we? Hello. Ugh, I feel like I am the queen. Period. I feel like I'm the queen. But I feel like I'm the queen of buying the physical book and then just immediately getting it on my Kindle. I am coming at you with an update. It's actually the next day. I don't know if you could tell by the change of wardrobe, but I do just kind of change my wardrobe so many times throughout the day. Why am I talking about my wardrobe right Anyway, so right now I'm actually 35% into The Fury. If you somehow forgot what book that we're reading right now, it's The Fury, by the way. Hey, by the way, I'm reading The Fury. I don't know if you guys remember that. I have my headphones on, so I don't know if A, I'm talking very loud, or B, there's background noise. I'm really hoping that there's not background noise. What I was going to say is that his books, I feel like, are so interesting to me because I feel like he is now following this theme. I feel like I don't remember that in The Silent Patient of like Greek mythology being a big thing in The Silent Patient. His writing, like if you weren't even looking at this from a thriller aspect, just the writing in this book is very, very interesting and it's very storytelling-esque and I really, really am enjoying the storytelling writing aspect. And usually writing in thrillers is isn't something that I noticed but I've always noticed it within his books which is why I feel like I also really like his books is because I feel like he is a very great writer and I'm just enjoying it so far it's very scenic because it takes place in an island in Greece and it's so descriptive without going into heavy detail and I love when an author knows that fine line of painting the picture but not dwelling too much into overanalyzing detail and it's just I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time 35% into it. The pacing and the setup of the book is also very original to me. It's not following the usual plot structure of a thriller so that also makes it a little bit refreshing. I have some guesses formulated in my brain. Well, all that being said, I'm gonna keep on reading. I 
just finished the fury wow i really don't know what to think but i will say he has done it again he's done it again this one i i think i felt the same way let me take these headphones off hey let me actually speak to you guys for a second i think i felt the same way with the maidens where the plot twist didn't really get me once you kind of start unraveling the story you can kind of see where it's going but it's still like following down the rabbit hole that is really fun in the way that it has been structured and set up like even though it's like yeah i can definitely see where this is going it's still very entertaining and also like at the end these little like easter eggs that are put into the epilogue i really appreciate for somebody who it feels like is in like the same universe that it all kind of ties back to i don't know it's kind of fun this book had a lot of twists and turns and i really enjoyed the narrative of the book the narrative was something that was really refreshing for me in a thriller because when i read thrillers i feel like one of my main critiques is that like romances they follow this like basic plot structure for i would say probably about 85% of thrillers so they can be very very insanely predictable because it's kind of a b or c type of situation but this one with having a very unique narrative was able to kind of throw me off where I was just really following the story and what was going to happen with that it didn't get me like I said so it's not a five star it's like definitely not a five stars for me but I still really enjoyed it and I feel like it still does solidify that I really, really enjoy his thrillers. They are insanely entertaining. So The Fury, we are done with. We have one more book to read for today's video. This is where I've been keeping all of the new releases at. Saving the best for last, I have Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Now, I don't know why I just guess that i'm stupid and yeah no that's just that's just the sentence yes i am when this book was first announced i don't know why i thought it was like getting into fantasy it's just romance and it's like paranormal romance where she's a vampire and he's a werewolf but now that i know that it's more of a like this is his like shape-shifting type of thing I'm not embarrassed to read this whatsoever. Like I am so just like over that stage of my life. I'm no longer embarrassed to like things. But if somebody like my family, like, hey, my family, listen to me and I'm like, this is just him and his wolf shape-shifting capabilities. And then I'm just like telling like a random stranger on the street who does not read books that I'm reading about a vampire and a werewolf and he shape-shifts, but he actually has like a buzz cut. You know, you have these self-aware moments sometimes where you're like, what? But I'm gonna read it anyway. I'm gonna start Bride. I honestly may listen to a little bit of the audiobook because just to, I don't want to jump like directly into a book after sitting there and reading. Is that the downstairs TV? That loud? That is crazy if so. <laughs> okay. Hello guys, it is update time with Bride, so I have about this much of the book left. It's a little bit confusing for me because it's not a fantasy. Like, it's told to be just kind of like a paranormal type romance, but it feels like it's focusing on the politics of this world and not the romance, so it feels very much like reading a fantasy book. So it's hard because it's like, if I was reading a fantasy book, this wouldn't really deter me in any way because I'd be like, oh, well, it's the world building of the series that we're going to be in like yeah the first book not having a whole lot of romance but then I kept on remembering like this is not a fantasy series this is just a standalone romance novel that I'm supposed to be caring about the pol politics of this world and the allegiance between the werewolves and the vampires and how everybody hates the vampires zero romance all of a sudden out of nowhere we go into romance within like the last chapter that I just read like out of nowhere like they have had not really any conversations they had like one conversation and now the romance is like all the way there and I'm like but I have about this much of the book left so I'm gonna work on finishing this and then we're gonna be done with the, the book and this video hello it's me I just finished this book I don't have the creative thoughts to make it this into a whole entire song. This is the, uh, I don't want to use the term weird. I'm not going to use the term weird. Most interest, not interesting. I don't know what I just read and I don't know how to feel about that either. 
this was interesting. I feel like it's just so weird because I feel like it didn't feel like all of Allie Hazelwood's other books and that may be because this is like a completely, hey, it's completely different from her other books because I was about to be like, it's not like the like cotton candy, strawberry lemonade feeling that her other books give and it's like, yeah, this is a paranormal romance. You're not gonna get that. I guess I was looking for that and that may be my own fault. Like I also am not connected to these two characters literally all I will never think about them again I feel like we didn't focus on the guy enough for me to really root for them as a couple like you spend so much time with the main character and honestly majority of the time she's not even focused on the guy like her and the guy barely interact and then all of a sudden they're like she's like focused on the subplot the entire time and then all of a sudden we take like a little bit of a break from that and then try to build up a relationship towards the end of the book to like make you connect with the relationship a little bit but it just doesn't work because it wasn't built up throughout the book it feels like we focused on the subplot and then all of a sudden oh wait i realize that i need to talk about the relationship so i'm going to do that right now this was interesting for sure certain parts of this book i want to scrub my eyes clean it kind of reminded me of when i read or tried to read ice planet barbarians and i was like what this this was an experience for sure. So these are the six books that I read in today's video. These were all new releases that came out within the past month. We'll start from bottom to the top. Isn't that, is that from WAP? What? The first book that I read in today's video and finished was Magnolia Park. Now, after sitting on this book, I, I finished it on Friday and today's actually, is today Monday? I have no perception when I tell you guys for the last three days I've been doing nothing but reading and listening to audiobooks I actually have no perception of reality. For the past three days since I finished this book I my brain just keeps on going back to it and I honestly I, I already said this that I'm not a big Magnolia Parks girly but this book made me like love the main guy in this book and I've never felt like this about him in all of the other books I'm actually going to put up the trigger warnings right here because there's a lot of triggering things that are spoke about in this book so my official rating for this is a four and a half which I think I did rate the long way home four and a half for Magnolia Parks. This one's also a four and a half. I just feel like the thing that's missing is that I don't love these characters. I love like the Daisy Hates characters, I feel. Then I picked up If Only I Had Told Her and I actually ended up saying, I think that I'm rating this one a two star. The book isn't bad. I just have already spoke about it that I just think that I built up expectations in my own brain for what I thought this book was gonna be and it was not at all. I didn't care about a random character's point of view that we got thrown into that had nothing to do really with the overarching story. <laughs> Next up is the breakup tour and this is one that I was just interested in. It was an anticipated release for me and I actually think I settled upon a two stars as well for this one. Guys, we really were not doing too hot with these new releases. Then we have Good Material by Dolly Alterton, which I actually decided on giving a three stars. I feel very indifferent to this book, but I did enjoy it for what it is. Then we have The Fury, and this one I actually ended up saying is going to be a three and a half stars. At first, it was gonna be a four, and then I was just like, it just, though like after i read it and put it down i swear after i put this down and i started listening to the bride audiobook and started reading bride i have not even thought about this book and then finally we have bride by allie hazelwood this one i am just so conflicted on for right now i'm going to say a two and a half i don't know if it will go up as i think about it i feel like right now i'm just really weirded out by some of the stuff that started happening towards the end of the book that i just don't think is for me personally yeah i don't know also just like i've already talked about how the romance just didn't even feel there for me i hope you guys enjoyed is the general consensus here let me know down below if you guys have any of these books on your radar if you've read any of these books some of them have been out for a little bit so let me know if they're either on your radar or you've read them anything you really want down below i really i really don't mind you can comment whatever you want i just appreciate you guys even clicking on today's video and i appreciate you guys always tuning in to hear my little opinions about books it's crazy that you guys even care about that so thank you for sticking around and with that being said, I'll see you guys when I see you. Peace. Oh, and thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay. For real, I'll see you guys in the video. Peace.